In the previous video, we looked at the overview page for Decred's Block Explorer and the basic information for understanding if the project is working as expected. This time, we'll delve into the block or an individual block and the data on offer. A staging point for this discussion is the open nature of on-chain transactions in comparison to the closed nature of traditional banking systems. By having no closed off values, all participants get the opportunity to make up their minds if Decred is performing to their expectations before participating in the monetary system. So let's dive in and head over to the DCR data overview page. By clicking on the block or a transaction link, it will reveal a detailed look of what's inside. Depending on how much digging you want to do, it's possible to go all the way back through the chain history. In the block link, you'll find that there's two areas to a block, the header section and the transaction area. The first piece of data you'll see in the block header is the block number, which shows the number of blocks chained together and the number of confirmations the block has. As a block gets linked to newer blocks, it gains more confirmations. In Decred, a block is irreversible once it reaches six confirmations. This is due to Decred's chain lock rule, which prevents deep reorgs of the blockchain data. On the right, you'll see that there's a link to the previous and next blocks, along with the API link. The API lets you examine the raw data of a block in its coded view. Next is the block hash, which in very basic terms is a reference or validation number for a block in the blockchain. The block hash is the value found by the miner that created the block and must be verifiably linked to both the previous and next block's hash to be deemed as valid. Then you have the block overview section, which includes total amount of DCR coins transacted and their current value in US dollars. How many DCR coins were privacy mixed? The size of the block in kilobytes. So Decred currently has a maximum block size of 0.39 megabytes. Next we have the block time, which shows when a block was produced. Then we have the transaction overview, which includes regular transactions, number of tickets that voted, tickets purchased and ticket revocations. Ticket revocations are tickets that get returned that either have missed their vote or expired without voting. In the last part of the block header, we'll look at the block details, which include the price of a ticket purchased during the creation of this block, the total fees for the block, the ticket pool size at the time the block was produced, the proof of work difficulty, the software version for both proof of work and proof of stake, the final state which is the final state of the lottery selection process used to determine which tickets voted on the current block. The nonce, which is an abbreviation for number only used once, refers to a solution that the blockchain miner needs to discover in order to produce a valid block. And finally, the vote bits, which is either a number value of one, the block was approved by proof of stake voters, or a number value of zero, the block was disapproved by proof of stake voters. Along with this, you also have a Merkle root and a stake root. A Merkle root is a simple mathematical way to verify the data on a Merkle tree. Merkle roots are used in cryptocurrencies to make sure that data blocks passed between peers on a peer-to-peer -peer network are whole, undamaged and unaltered. The stake root field was originally used in the same way as the Merkle root field, except it only applied to all the stake related transactions in the block, which included ticket purchases, votes and ticket revocations. However, as of DCP 0005, the stake related transactions are now included in the Merkle root and the stake root field has been repurposed to provide mathematical proof that additional data over and above the transactions is unaltered. It currently includes compact filters which enable fast, efficient and secure lightweight clients. After the block header, you get a breakdown of every type of transaction along with all the data surrounding that transaction. Typical transactions include the block reward for the miner, including block fees, the block reward for the treasury, the five voting tickets, which also get part of the block reward, missed voting transactions, ticket purchase transactions, revocation transactions, and then finally regular peer-to-peer -peer transactions, which can also include mixing transactions, 
When you delve deeper into the transaction section, you start to realize the open nature of the blockchain, where every coin or atom which is Decred's lowest denomination is accounted for, and every transaction is verifiable against the chain history and the coin supply. Just imagine your bank revealing all of this data in real time for every transaction in a verifiably transparent way. Imagine if your bank or central bank was this accountable and think where it might lead. It might lead to more honesty. It might lead to a fairer monetary system. It might lead to a system where anyone can participate if they'd like to. It might lead to reducing the impact of centralized entities or cartels on our daily lives. The Block Explorer is the root of what makes blockchains so incredibly innovative and revolutionary. It's the eye-opening technology that makes you realize how broken and flawed a closed system is. It makes you question, who does a closed system benefit the most? Possibly those who control it or have the most to gain from the concealed nature. An open system, on the other hand, puts everyone in control on, and on a level playing field and disadvantages dishonest behavior. In the next DCR data video, we'll look at the charts that can be produced from all this wonderful block data. Now, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to show your support, don't forget to give it a like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you 